I bid you welcome, or welcome back, to another random little video instead of doing my video about my Halloween project that I've been promising for some time and uh, it turns out that not even my Halloween project is finished as of now. You might say that I'm not consistent, I feel like it's just a meme on this channel now, so <laughs> let's just let's just do whatever so there's a video and I can talk about interesting stuff. So, perspective drawing was always one of my weaknesses and I've been struggling with it ever since I started, like nearly eight years ago. I will show you a few examples, here are a couple of commissions that have one point perspective every line just connects to one imaginary point somewhere in the distance. Here are a couple of fan art pieces with two point perspective. Now that I look at this, this is much more of a one point perspective. I'm not fixing that in the video. This one, this entire room and the, the cabinet all follow two point perspective. If I'm not mistaken, these are the only times I ever used three point perspective. I'm pretty fond of this one from American Horror Story. Though I did not measure out this uh, railing properly, I made this completely by eyeballing it and somehow it ended up cool. There's a whole video on this channel about that uh, that whole project. And also this one, I was like, okay, this is it. This is the point where I'll be able to use a three-point perspective really nicely. And this picture is going to look really amazing thanks to that. Pretty much the only thing I achieved is that this side of that uh, nightstand looks crooked. <laughs> So let's move on from these and not even acknowledging the existence of four point perspective. There's this thing called five point perspective. And it's like this completely unachievable, insanely hard technique that you cannot even attempt to do unless you are Kim Jong Ji, of course. How could you, how could you ever do that? Let me show you. For a start, I decided to go bold and make my very first five-point perspective drawing an entire room filled with many things, mostly inspired by dark academia and old mansions. I did the perspective grid by hand on the paper this time, I will show how it looks later when we switch to digital. I used a mechanical pencil with B lead so you can see the sketch better on the recording, and I made the actual piece with black gel pen. Some cheap ones from Lidl, a pack of six was less than two US dollars, but it is good for just goofing around with it. I started by making a fireplace in the middle and I placed it a little bit too close to the viewer and it feels like you're about to headbutt the top of the fireplace and the rest of the room is super distorted because of it but I carried on and finished it all up. I literally just went and started adding things to it. There are some little items like a, like an hourglass, candles and a school, a birdcage and I made a shelf full of dolls. There's a teddy bear and a little music box under them. I added some random pictures to the wall as well doing my best to follow the perspective on those as well, the same way I did with the rest of the room. I turned the entire scene into a corridor with a window on one end and I roughly marked in the ceiling and the floor on that side. I was not planning on doing it uh, with such a huge distortion where you can literally see the wall that is supposed to be behind you, so I just wanted to outline how the entire geometry would go there without adding any more details. I ended the piece with a random little black cat that is walking by and I also did some hatching to get a minimal amount of shading. After completing this first one, I decided to do an exterior scene for the second and also pay attention to not make the same mistakes that I did for the first time, namely putting this fireplace way too close to the viewer so it looks like we are right facing into it and everything else is super distorted. My goal was to make a five point perspective version of this house, which is, if I'm not mistaken, the first iteration of the Adams family house drawn by Charles Adams. In that as a reference, I created the second piece and I paid extra attention to not put all the subjects too close to the viewer in order to make them not distorted. Look at that! <laughs> that is some existential tear nightmare. Listen, I even had to make the higher point of the house smaller, so it's not gonna be like half of my fingernail size in the end. I grossly undermeasured how far this house was and how much, how much distortion it is going to have. But actually, it kind of came out as a cool little piece um, with a really different vibe. I'm pretty sure that there are people who tried to create something like this and failed because it wasn't, wasn't distorted enough in the end. Have you read It Grows On You by Stephen King? That is what this reminds me of, <laughs> only it's like super distorted. 
instead of uh, like an expanding house. You know, I wouldn't blame you if you said that, hey, nice little house drawing, nice little architecture. What were you listening in the background while you were drawing this? Joshua drawing studies by Proko or something? So yes, this did not turn out the way I wanted, but I am moderately fond of this one. Also little ghostly figures in the window looking at you, making it almost as scary as the the William Defoe gif. Uh, <laughs> now the grid. I won't go into how exactly it works in this video. I will link some resources into the description about it in case you want to check that out and you're not familiar with five point perspective. I made a more precise grid digitally in Krita to use that from now on. You can really make this in any other program, even Microsoft Paint, but I will share the one I made myself as well, also in the description. We start with a horizon line, put down a vanishing point to the middle for everything that's facing directly towards the viewer, then two more points to the sides and two more on the vertical axis as well, then connect them with curved lines that will serve as our guide when it comes to depicting three-dimensional objects in 2D. I made a stencil digitally and I will show off different ways to use it. Okay, I saved this grid that I just made and let's go to Realistic Paint Studio and insert it in there. Okay, here we are in Realistic Paint Studio. Let's see a reference layer. Oh, that looks weird. Okay, no, it was just the, <laughs> just the preview. For some reason, it doesn't line up properly and I have no idea what I missed, but I will not really use anything towards the end, so it's like, okay. I will uh, do a better one sometime. So what we can do here is uh, resize it and only use a portion. Uh, I, just to try it out, I will use the entire thing or like more like this. You can always at any point resize this alongside with your drawing. We are just pulling down the opacity a little bit. So, and there we go, we can I picked the worst possible place to draw this. Uh, my camera died for some reason. Ah, hello, can you see me? I have no idea what happened. My, my phone just froze completely. Ah! Okay, it's working. Yeah, I should have done it like this, you know, anywhere where it really matters. <laughs> Look at that. Everything is just going to nicely line up. There we go. I'm going to propose that we draw something with this. I know the perfect thing to draw right now. Now, everyone loves the Adams family, right? I decided to make something similar to it, even if a bit more far-fetched than that. I went with drawing a cemetery, which is one of my favorite things to draw, and it was particularly based on a local cemetery I visited recently, but that cemetery was a Roman Catholic cemetery, and for my drawing I went with a Satanist cemetery. You know, the Adams family was about subverting the expectations of a suburban family, so I did the same thing with a cemetery where I included just Satanist imagery. Really the only things I did was switching some of the symbols into upside down crosses, pentacles and other similar things. You will even see a tombstone with my name on it alongside a sigil of Lucifer later on, along with something that I don't want to spoil for now. I uh, definitely did a little whoopsie when I, uh, <laughs> I just randomly started drawing these stones here and there and uh, that just looks like a rocket. It was meant to be like some monument. Let's do some uh, like mausoleums here and there so they don't look like just a bunch of graves by themselves. I should have actually, you know, prepared the rows in which I'm going to place these, but you know, next time. Strange question, have you ever drawn a mausoleum from imagination? I was under the impression I knew what one should look like and I was not too far, but this just almost looks like a simple little house, you know, living space goals and all that, but I was pretty okay with how it turned out, despite you will see what I should have done instead of this. Okay, I drew a mausoleum from like imagination. I sort of realized that why would it have such windows? Okay, I will look it up how they actually look like and draw some from reference. After looking at a few pictures of actual mausoleums, I did one with some steps, pillars, a door that is extending into the building, a roof that isn't hanging over the edge and some tiny windows. You know, the things that are really needed to keep this thing in one piece and relatively unharmed for a long period of time. For the bigger monument on the right, I added a statue of Baphomet instead of a statue of an angel or the Virgin Mary that you would see in a Christian cemetery. Important one, I did not add a sigil of Baphomet to the piece for the reason that it's the main symbol of the Church of Satan, which is an organization 
organization, I deeply disagree with on many levels. If you know, you know. Also, based on the local cemetery I mentioned, I added some trees, one giant tree for spectacle, and an entire row of small ones that go along a smaller road. Then I added a simple layer of shadows to everything on the piece. Okay, here comes the ever confusing part of using Realistic Paint Studio once again. I want to put a sun on this picture. I want to put a moon on this picture, now that I thought about it properly. I make a circular selection in this program. Does it work like this? Oh, why? Why did you do this to me? Okay, it's not going to work like that. Okay, so I can... It's gonna be more tricky. So what I wanted to do is do a circular selection, invert it, and then paint outside of the selection, but I cannot do it in an easy way in this program. Can I? No, I can't. So what I will do instead, make one solid line, playing with the negative space, where the white of the moon is actually going to be the white of the paper. I don't even know how many moons I've drawn, but I have no idea how to do it from memory. <laughs> I need to look it up. I know that there is like, more stuff on this side and it's like roughly this shape what i will need to moon along with some little additions this piece is coming to a close slowly and this might be my favorite from today's collection okay i'm going to put a bunch of outlines of gravestones into the back so it looks like the cemetery continues beyond that little road to add some extra depth, I added an entire tree line to the distance with a light shade, taking advantage of my beloved aerial perspective. After all of that, I went ahead and added some outlines to almost everything just for some practice and for some extra detail. Doing a second piece digitally in Realistic Paint Studio. This time, only a sketch without outlining. I made a really small and cozy looking park scene. I just started with a bench, then I added a person sitting on a blanket, a cityscape with buildings. I don't want to go into everything, but I will point at a few things I found amusing and informative during this uh, little practice piece. When I added the first car, I wanted to draw a car from imagination with realistic proportions, and I drew a little wooden car from the 1800s, so I really quickly looked up what cars look like in real life. No, I don't drive. You guessed it correctly. I added a little table tennis table to the side, deliberately close to the edge of my grid, so I can see how it will distort, and it goes so hard, just look at it, I struggle so much with 3-point perspective, but 5-point just flows so nicely to me, and I might be at the peak of my ignorance still, but it felt much more natural and easy doing it like that. A challenge I imposed on myself was making a swing set. It's not just a collection of boxes, like everything else on the scene so far. After making one giant box, I had to measure out where to place the middle of the top part, then hang the two swings from it, then I'm pretty sure I overdid the distortion on the legs of the set, they were meant to be totally straight, but they feel like they were bent by default which can be an actual design for a swing set. These were just not the way I wanted to make them. Still believable though. Also a little thing I added here was little shadows that help you further see the objects in space, especially the shadows under the swing set that place it really nicely into the scene. In the end I added a dog that somehow managed to fit into the grid without any issue, but my favorite thing on the piece is really the little raccoon looking at the garbage can I, ca I created out of a set of cylinders that you can nicely place into a box once you place it down carefully. Originally that was meant to be the full video, but then I was really in the mood to get one more perspective drawing traditionally, so I made this other room. I don't want to go super into it, it is really similar to the first one, but I added some more complex things as practice. One was a wall on the left side with an opening on it, really strong distortion there, you can just feel like it's right next to you, and I also placed a picture of my OC Edgar to the side, and I made sure to distort the face on the picture to line up with the grid too. I made a chandelier that ended up pretty bad, I rushed it a lot, it's falling apart, but overall it does give a nice element. And on the other hand I did multiple mistakes on the right side too, the windows and the desk somehow don't follow the line towards the vanishing point in the middle, and I don't know when I was so careless to mess them up, but I didn't notice it during the process. 
A bit underwhelming, yes, but I did some cool things and I did some extra shading as well, most notably on the bookshelf on the next room. Another rushed but cool practice was the last page I will show today. I did some drawings of my dear character named Sunshine Honeybee. I made several mistakes on like each single character and I won't list them all out. I will only mention the funniest one for me, which is this one. Does it remind you of the same thing? Overall, a giant mess, but I had fun and I got some figures uh, drawn in perspective. I did some more ever since the recording and those went much better, but I really did want to include this page so you can see where I started when it comes to figures in five point perspective. There's a thing that I forgot to mention for the last two. What I did was I opened this grid on my screen and I traced it onto my paper from the monitor. But for the one with these sketches of sunshine, I didn't use the entire thing. I like grabbed out one piece of the entire grid and I covered this on the paper so you're not seeing the entire giant lens, you're only seeing a portion of it. So not everything is uh, overly distorted and you can still use this grid in any way you want. And another thing that I haven't shown and I haven't even done myself, but uh, it's a cool thing, is that this thing is flexible. You can distort it in any way you want. And for example, if you do it like this and then you would draw into it, it wouldn't distort that much towards the sides. So what you can do with this is have like a much wider picture that is still following this uh, distortion. And maybe it is going to even look more close to reality or at least the way you would observe the world around you. You can also do it in the other direction and create something like this and like depict a really high building in the middle or a high person not high in that way you're, you're thinking about <laughs> but yeah that's the only thing that i wanted to add to this video and that's all for now i'm showing a scan or an expert of uh, all the pieces i did my favorite is definitely the cemetery but all the others were really fun to make and i had no idea that five point perspective will be so easy for me i always really struggled with three point and i thought it will be the end of me but turns out when i don't have to bother st with straight lines my life just becomes much easier. There's a joke somewhere hidden here about other things that are straight, but I will leave that to your imagination. I most recently did another five point perspective drawing of a farmstead along with some goats and the chupacabra. I will feature that once uh, I wrap up my really late Halloween project as well. And as always, thank you very much for watching. Have a nice day. Create something, even if uh, that is some half decent thing that you get into for the first time, because it can really be a good learning experience. But most importantly, don't forget to have fun while doing that. Farewell. I recorded for like three minutes and I already smudged my lipstick. Damn. Did I want to record anything else for the talking cat portion of this video?